Hello everyone, I am Garima Singh. I hope you are doing well. So I am going to discuss macroeconomics. That is the part B of NCRT. Economic consists of two parts, micro and macro. So I am going to discuss later part that is macroeconomics. So what topics include in macroeconomics which I am going to discuss on uh, upcoming lectures. These are the topics. First one is national income and aggregate. Second, money and banking. Third is determination of income and employment. Fourth is government budget and the economy. So if this balance of payments. So before moving, jumping on to or moving on to this topic one, national income and aggregates, it is necessary and it is mandatory also to know what macroeconomics all about. Before knowing what macro you uh, people should or students should aware about what economy is all about. So we discuss basic concept, meaning of an economy, basic activities, what what activities uh, like carry out or be performed in an economy that is production, consumption, capital formation. Then we move on to our like chapter that is our topic, what we are discussing all about macroeconomics. So it's meaning, it's importance, how it distance from microeconomics. So here I'm going to discuss with on the left hand, you can see economy is written. So I'm going to discuss what economy is all about. So economy is a system by which people get their living. This definition is given by Professor A.G. Brown. So economy is a system consists of several independent units. Economy consists of all such institutions which provide two things. First one is employment. If people are getting employment. So it eventually they are getting livelihood also production generates income like every for every rupees worth of goods and services produced income of a rupee is generated like production generates income for instance production is undertaken in farms factory mine shops bank railways roads workshops school hospitals cinema houses ships airline government and private resources etc etc you can all add more on things so these all provide employment and livelihood all these institutions which produce goods and services so eventually they are providing you a living and a livelihood so we can see that economy is the collection of producing unit located within a geographical area of a country that is why we have Indian economy, American have American economy, British has British economy, same like Russian or Chinese economy, etc. It indicates the collection of all producing units of income generating units located within the geographical boundaries of the country. On the right hand, it is written as basic activities. So three type of activities which has carried out in an economy that is production, consumption, capital formation production production is generally defined as an activity which produce material goods and services or which increase the value of commodity already produced that it's add on value it's not only limited to production is not only limited to goods only it includes services also services like you get services from doctor lawyer teacher that in hotels these are the services you get for example goods there's like a plain wood now you are converting it to a furniture, you are adding some value. So it all include even add-on value should come into the part of production. Second part is like second BC activity is consumption. Consumption would have been production then you are consuming. Not only individually but as collectively human wants are satisfied. Individual like you are using soaps, clothes, shoes, furniture, fridge, all those things which you are using to satisfying your individual wants that cover only individual want collective human wants are like people are utilizing or using roads parks school hospital defense law and order these come under collectively human wants because number of people are uh, using that so it is collectively human wants are satisfied they are collectively like individual collectively both things are satisfied at both level they are consuming things so that is consumption of our capital formation besides production and consumption capital formation is the third important function of economy as i have written capital formation is the net addition to the capital stock of economy during a given period in a growing economy all that is produced in here is not consumed usually 
and that part of production which is not consumed during a year is investment in other word excess of production over consumption is called capital formation or investment production is excess consumption is not so that going to use in next year also it is called as capital formation alternatively that part of current production which is not consumed but aside for use in future production it is called capital formation eventually if production is going to excess than consumption so that excess thing going to use in future so that is all that is also a capital formation and both three is are interrelated with each other these are the basic activities they are interrelated with each other increase in production lead to increase in consumption or capital formation or both because they are interrelated so we have discussed two topic what economy is all about what we say activities included now we move on to the topic itself macroeconomics that is what macroeconomics is all about in simple term it's a wider you can it's a wider concept micro is a confined to a individual unit but macro study the economy as its whole in its totality I have underlined that line also study the economic in its totality or as a whole so macroeconomics is they say it study the economy wide aggregates here number of thing are included that national income aggregate saving investment total employment general price level aggregate supply their number of aggregates two are included in that these are the basic which i have written so macroeconomics is it study not individual economic unit like household farm or industry but the whole economic system it study the aggregates such aggregates like total employment saving which i have discussed like left hand also three are given on right hand also but these uh, aggregates are not confined to only these six their number of aggregates are also included in that so importance of macroeconomics it helps to solve economic problem like poverty unemployment business cycle it helps to bring stability in price level it helps to achieve the goal of economic growth higher level of gdp it describe how the economy as a whole function with detailed knowledge of functioning of an economy at micro level it's been possible to formulate policies you can say these days when the study of lack of individual units has become almost impossible when government participation through monetary and fiscal measure in the economy has increased very much use of macro analysis have become indispensable correct economic policy formulated at macro level it's made possible to control business cycle like whatever inflation and deflation happen in business they are controlled only when you study at macro level macroeconomics is the basis of all plan of economic development or under developed economy economics are now confidently exploring the possibility and ways of maintaining economic growth and full employment and that is only happen only if you have the knowledge of detailed knowledge of functioning of an economy at macro level so this is the importance last but not the least is like i have already discussed uh is that macroeconomic theory has saved us from the danger of application of microeconomic theory to the problem of economy as well because microeconomic theory is applicable at as individual unit only not as a whole so that part macro level study is important so <clears throat> there is a distinction i have already discussed uh, micro is at for individual unit macro is for that economy as a whole in macro the main thing is that income thing but in micro is that price determination microeconomics example are like individual income individual saving price determinants in in individual forms but macro national income national saving macro is all about income is the major determinant or uh, helps to solve the central problem of full employment of resource and economy while in macro price is the major problem and there is a major problem of how what and whom to produce in the economy so this is all about macro and micro economics in next lecture i'm going to discuss national income and related aggregates um sorry for i have a bad throat oh, sorry for bearing that to my voice it's really getting worse now so i have uh, ending this lecture with this basic concepts clearing next lecture i'm going to discuss national income and related aggregates and i have taken it from 12th class ncert so if you're preparing for any competitive exam or 12th class student that's going to help for for you so here i am ending my lecture thank you